In this lecture, we are briefly going to understand what is a route parameter and then we will learn how to read the value of a route parameter from within a controller. So let's first understand what is a route parameter. The route parameters are the placeholders within a route that allows you to capture dynamic parts of the URL. They provide flexibility and enable your application to handle different data based on the specific values provided in the URL. So for example, let's say we have a controller method to get all the users. So whenever we make a get request from the client to this URL, it is going to give us all the users. But now our requirement is we want to get a single user based on some value. For example, we want to get a single user based on the ID of that user. In that case, we will have to create another route which will look something like this. So it will be also like root URL slash users slash and then this 101, it is the ID of the user. So here we want to get that single user whose ID is 101. But this part of the URL is dynamic. Its value can change. For example, if I want to get the user details for a user whose ID is 1000, then we will change this part to 1000. If I want to get the user details of a user whose ID is 20, we will change this part to 20. So this part of the URL will be dynamic. Its value can change. And this can be done, this can be achieved using route parameters. So route parameters are the dynamic part of the URL. In this URL, this HTTP colon localhost 3000 slash users, this part will be static. It will not change. But after that, this value 101, this can change to some other values. So this part of the URL will be dynamic and this can be achieved with the help of route parameter. And we can have multiple route parameters in a URL. For example, let's say we want to get all the users based on their gender and location. For that, we can create another route where this root URL slash users will be common, but then in that URL, we will also have two dynamic parts, this gender part and this city part. So this gender can be male or female and this city can be any city value. Here it is London. So in this URL, this male part, this, this value can change. Here we can specify any gender and this part can change. Here we can specify the value of any city. So these two values, these two parts of the URL are going to be dynamic. Its value can change and we can achieve this using route parameters. So let's see how we can create a controller method for handling those routes which contains route parameters. Let's go back to VS Code. And in here, whenever we make a GET request to this URL, in this URL, we don't have any dynamic part. So whenever a request will be made to this URL, this get method will be called. Okay. But now we also want to have a controller method which can handle a request which contains a dynamic data, which contains a route parameter. So for that, I'm going to create a method and I'm going to call it get user by ID. Okay. And this method will be called whenever a user makes a get request. So I'm going to decorate it with this get decorator. So it should be at get. Okay. Now this method will be called whenever a user makes a request to root URL slash users slash some ID value. And that ID value will have some dynamic value. It is not going to be static. And to specify that dynamic value, we are going to make use of route parameter. And to specify the route parameter to this get decorator, we can pass a string value and there we can specify a name for the route parameter. And to specify a route parameter, first of all, we use colon. And after that, we specify the name of the route parameter. And I'm going to call it as ID here. So now, whenever a request will be made to root URL slash users slash some value, for example, 101. In that case, this URL will not match the URL pattern for this get users because this get users for this get users, the URL pattern is root URL slash users. So in that case, this one will be called. But here we have root URL slash users slash 
some dynamic value and this url is not going to match the url pattern for this controller method but this url is going to match the url pattern for this get user by id method because till here till root url slash users this url will be common for each of these controller methods because here we have specified the name as users so root url slash users will be common for each of these controller methods but then using this get decorator for this controller method we are also specifying that to this url we are also going to get the value for the id and for that we are specifying this id route parameter now for this method i only want to have one route parameter but it is also possible to specify multiple route parameters and that we can do by using a slash and then colon and then specifying the another name for the parameter for example name and if i want to have another route parameter again i'll say slash and to specify the route parameter we'll say colon and then the name for the parameter let's say gender so these are the three route parameters which this controller method is going to take and here each of these route parameter values are mandatory whenever we are going to make a request we must provide the value for each of these route parameters because they are mandatory okay so if i save the changes here and if we go to browser and there when we are making a request to root url slash users it is going to return us an array with all the users if i say root url slash users slash one and if i press enter we will get this message that it is not able to find any controller method which matches the url pattern which we are specifying here if i say root url slash one slash maybe john and if i press enter in that case also we are getting the same error not found but if i say root url slash one slash john slash some value for the gender let's say male and if i press enter you see we don't have any error because we have a controller method which is taking three route parameters and that method is this get user by id method so it is taking three route parameters so when we are supplying value for three route parameters we are not getting any error because all these three route parameters are mandatory if i make this gender as optional and we can make a route parameter optional by simply specifying a question mark after that so now in this url pattern this id route parameter is mandatory this name route parameter is mandatory but this gender route parameter is optional so we may or may not provide the value of this gender parameter so if we save the changes now and if we go back to the browser if i specify the value for id name and gender parameter and if i press enter we don't have any error and since the gender parameter is optional if i omit the value of gender route parameter also and if i press enter now also we don't have any error but this id and name route parameter are mandatory so if i omit any one of them and if i press enter we get this error not found because there is no route pattern in our controller in our user controller which matches this url okay so in this way we can also make a route parameter optional by specifying a question mark after that and we can also specify multiple route parameters now what if i want to read the value of a route parameter so here when we are making a request i'm specifying the value for the id route parameter let me also specify the value for name and gender route parameter and when i press enter we don't have any error and these are the parameter values the route parameter values this one will be assigned to id route parameter this john will be assigned to name route parameter and this male will be assigned to this gender route parameter but how can i read those values for that what we need to do is to this method get user by id method we can specify a parameter let's call it param and for now let's set its type as any okay and let's decorate this param with at param decorator and in order to use this at param decorator we also need to import it from this nest.js slash common library okay so i'm already importing it here and after this decorator we also need to use parenthesis and now what will happen is since we have decorated this param parameter with this at param decorator whatever value we are going to pass for this id route parameter this name route parameter and this gender route parameter for this param parameter it will be assigned with an object and in that object we will have 
key value pairs. The key will be the route parameter names and the value will be the value which we are passing for those route parameters. So there will be an ID property set to one. There will be a name property in that object set to John and there will be a gender property in that object set to male. So let's save the changes here and let me also go ahead and let me log it, log this param in the console. So let's say console.log param. Let's save the changes. And our application has been recompiled and it is rerunning. Now let's go to the browser and let's make a request to root URL slash users slash this ID value, this name value and this gender value. So when I make a request now, a request will be sent to the server and this URL, it matches the route pattern for this method, this get user by ID method, right? So in that case, this method will be executed and what it is going to log, it is going to log this param parameter in the console. And where is that console? Let's go to command prompt and there you will see that an object has been logged where we have this ID, name and gender property. So these are the route parameter names which we have set here, ID, name and gender. And they are assigned with the values which we have passed from the client. Okay, and even though for the ID we are passing a numeric value, it will be read as a string value. Always remember that. Okay, remember that the route parameter values will always be read as a string value. So when you want to use it as a number or as a Boolean, you will have to explicitly convert it. Now, what if I want to read a single route parameter value instead of reading all the route parameters? Currently, in this URL pattern, we have three route parameters. But out of those three route parameters, I only want to read the value of a single route parameter. Let's say I only want to read the value of this ID route parameter. For that, to this param decorator, we can pass a parameter and I'll call it as ID. So what I want is, whatever is the value of the ID route parameter, I want to read that and I want to assign that value to this param. Okay, so let's save the changes here. Let's see if our application has recompiled or not. It has not recompiled. So let me stop it. And let's rerun it. So now our application is again running. Now let's go back to the browser. And again, I'm going to make a request with the same route parameter values. If I press enter, and now if we go back to the command prompt, there you will see that one is logged. So now what is happening is, we are only reading the value of id route parameter and that value is being assigned to this param parameter of this get user by id and we are logging that value okay so in this way we can also read the value of a single parameter but if we want to read the value of all the route parameters we don't need to specify any parameter for this param decorator in that case this param will be assigned with an object which will contain all the route parameter names as the key and the value which we have passed for it as its value. Now for this get user by ID method, I don't need this name and gender parameter. So I'll remove it. And again, you can specify multiple route parameters. And if you want to make a route parameter optional, after that route parameter, you need to specify this question mark. And the order in which these route parameters are created, the values which you are going to pass in the URL, those values will be assigned in the same order. So this one will be assigned to ID, this John will be assigned to name and this male will be assigned to gender. And another very important point to remember is that your optional parameters should always come in the end. There should not be any optional parameter in the middle or in the start. All your optional parameters should come in the end. Always keep that in mind. All right, so for this method, I don't need these two route parameters. So I'll remove it. I only want to get this ID route parameter. And since I have only one route parameter, here to this param decorator, I'm going to specify the route parameter name whose value I want to read. So here I want to read the value of ID route parameter. So whatever value we will pass for this ID route parameter that will be assigned to this param. And instead of calling it param, let me call it as ID to give a more meaningful name. And now what we are going to do is from within this method, I'm going to call this get user by ID method of this user service. So here I'm going to create an instance of this user service. Let me copy this line. Let me paste it here. 
and then on that user service let's call get user by id and to this get user by id method we need to pass the value for this id parameter and it should be a numeric value now here this id will be a string value because we are reading this id from the route parameter and when we will read it we will read it as a string value so before passing this id which is a string value to this get user by id method we also need to convert it to number type and for that i am simply going to use plus in front of it and this plus will convert that string value to its number type and then this get user by id method of this user service it is going to return us a user with a given id all we want from this controller method is we want to return that user from here from this get user by id method so we want to return that user in the response with this let's save the changes let's see if the application has been recompiled or not so again it has not recompiled let's go ahead and let's recompile it and now it has recompiled let's go back to the browser and now let's make a request to root url slash users slash id so in this case we should get that user in the response whose id is one if i press enter you will see that we have received that user in the response whose id is one if i specify two here and if i press enter we'll get that user in the response whose id is two so this is how we can read the value of a route parameter in our controller method this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day